Hello and welcome to Hussman's Tech Talk podcast series. Today we'll be discussing preventative maintenance needed for air-cooled condensers on refrigeration systems. My name is Paul Nadu. I'll be your host today, along with our resident expert, Don Elliott. Hello, Don. Hi, Paul. Don, we've got several questions for you today, so let's start out with the most important one right now. Tell us, what does an air-cooled condenser do on a refrigeration system? Well, Paul, it's one of the four major components in a basic refrigeration system. You know, a properly designed condenser does three things. First, it desuperheats the high pressure, high temperature refrigerant vapor. Once the refrigerant is desuperheated, the vapor starts condensing. At that point, it's saturated, meaning there's liquid and vapor present. Once the refrigerant is in total liquid state, the liquid refrigerant will start the subcooling phase. The subcooled refrigerant is fed into the metering device or in a larger system, the liquid receiver. So Don, tell us what are the most common applications for these types of air-cooled condensers? It's common to find air-cooled condensers on most light commercial self-contained equipment, HVAC package units and split system units, commercial refrigeration condensing units along with large parallel rack systems. And most of that equipment is located on a rooftop. Don, we all know that technicians love to talk about troubleshooting. So tell us, what are some of the failures that we see on this type of air-cooled condenser unit? Well, it usually happens on the first hot weekend of the year. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, air-cooled condensers rely on airflow. Lack of airflow is the most common issue. So let's focus on that lack of airflow issue and tell us what are the causes behind it? Well, dirt and debris is the biggest issue. Since most, con most condensers are designed fin and tube, the aluminum fins have slots on the side. These slots help with the heat transfer process. Unfortunately, they grab dirt and debris that pass through as well. The condensers also are designed to have more fins per inch, meaning the fins are closer together, creating a larger heat transfer area, but also causing more dirt and debris to collect and build up. Okay, Don, well, is a dirty condenser really the only cause of these airflow issues, or are there other causes? No, Paul, that's just part of it. Fan motor failure is another cause of lack of airflow through the condenser. But for this podcast, we'll focus on cleaning of the air cool condenser. Okay, that sounds great, Don. So what can a technician do to prevent this lack of airflow issue that's often caused by dirt and debris? Well, Paul, it starts out with a good preventative maintenance program. Interior self-contained condensers that you'll find in inside uh, retail stores should be cleaned every 30 days or so. With the power disconnected, Cleaning will include vacuuming the front of the condenser fins where the air enters. Regulated compressed air or nitrogen can be used to blow out the condenser opposite of the airflow. The supply houses carry a wide variety of cleaners. If you choose to use these products, make sure you follow the manufacturer's directions. They can be corrosive and do damage. Even though most self-contained uh, condensers are made of steel, they can still be damaged. Well, that sounds really good for the smaller interior self-contained equipment. So what about the larger exterior rooftop condensers located in packaged HVAC units and large commercial refrigeration condensers and condensing units? You know, Paul, I'm glad you asked that. Most of these type of condensers are made with aluminum fins. It's important that they're not damaged during the cleaning process. You know, with power disconnected, lock out, tag out in place, cleaning will include the use of domestic water supply a three quarter inch garden hose with a nozzle works well. There's also the Water Saber Pro that you can pick up at most supply houses that works well too. If, use, if using regulated compressed air or nitrogen or a pressure washer, make sure that the aluminum fins are not damaged. Don, I noticed that these uh, fins are aluminum and not steel. Can you tell us why this is significant for this type of air cooled condenser? Well, Paul, condensers with aluminum fins are easily damaged. The high pressure air or water will bend the fins over causing poor airflow. Spend extra time where the tubes in the condensers pass through the tube sheets. This, is, this seems to be where the dirt collects. For better results, water should flow opposite direction of the airflow. This will mean most likely you'll have to remove the fan guard and sometimes the fan motor. And always make sure the power is disconnected and locked out tagged out. Absolutely, Don. Safety first. Great point. So, Don, can you walk us through the cleaning process? Yeah, sure, Paul. You know, gently wet the outside of the uh, coil to loosen the dirt. Using water pressure between about 45 pounds per square inch and 65 pounds per square inch, flush the coil opposite of the coil's normal airflow with a generous and somewhat powerful supply of water. Now flush the coil in the direction of the coil's normal airflow using a generous and somewhat powerful supply of water. 
This process may have to be repeated several times if the condenser is really dirty. And you should give the coil about five minutes to dry before turning the unit back on. Fantastic. Thank you, Don. So, Don, can you tell us what kinds of cleaners are the best for this application? There are several uh, different condenser cleaner agents on the market. If you're using commercial grade condenser cleaner, make sure you follow the manufacturer directions. They can be very corrosive and damage the aluminum fins. Also be aware that some cities, counties, and states require you to capture the spent condenser cleaner and water mixture before it goes down the roof drain into a storm sewer. Uh, typically, the captured uh, cleaner water mixture can be disposed of by pouring it down a domestic or sanitary sewer. In Colorado, for instance, it's against the law to allow spent water cleaner mixture to drain into a storm sewer. Therefore, it is recommended only water used to be clean condenser coils in that state. Don, as we get ready to wrap up this particular edition of our podcast, is there anything else that you'd like to share with technicians about preventative maintenance for air-cooled condensers? Yes, Paul. You know, from time to time, a water sprinkler is used to help cool a struggling air-cooled condenser in the middle of a hot summer. You know, this is not recommended, certainly not for a long-term solution. A steady spray of water can cause corrosion and damage to the aluminum fins, and it's a huge waste of water. Don, thank you so much. You answered all of our questions perfectly. We appreciate your expertise and help. And this will conclude this Tech Talk podcast edition on air-cooled condenser maintenance. Please join us for our next podcast series, which is going to focus on air-cooled condenser mechanical failures. We look forward to hearing from you then. Thank you so much for joining us.